Hey, 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 it's the Phenomenal Stemmist. Come on, guys. I encourage you to uh, to like my Phenomenal Stemmist page. Um, it's important that you do that so that you can see me come on right away. Um, I'm working on uh, sharing my uh, post right now from Phenomenal Stemmist to my personal page. That's usually where uh, most people start to see. Okay, so I'm doing that right now. Good afternoon, good evening. It's the Phenomenal Stemist here. My name is Dr. Maya Byfield. Um, I received my bachelor's in biology from Oakwood College, uh, now university. And I went on to do my master's and PhD um, in molecular pharmacology from Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And this Sunday, I'm gonna be discussing uh, the role of stimulants, we call them dopaminergic stimulants, um, drugs like LSD, cocaine, ecstasy, we call that methamphetamine. These are all stimul stimulants um, and marijuana, which is an indirect stimulant, an indirect dopaminergic stimulant. So I'm going to focus on what these drugs do to the brain and um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, medicinal uses for marijuana. Hey, Dana. Thanks for joining. All right, so let's let's talk about dope. <laughs> Back in the 80s, you know, they, that's what we called it, right? Well, it really stands for, I think, the street uh, name for dopamine. Um, and so first we'll ask, what is dopamine? What is dopamine? All right. So uh, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. So if you remember, I taught you last week about how the brain is filled with these neurons. So here you have these neurons and they transmit information to other neurons. That's how our brain communicates. Our brain communicates with itself. Our brain communicates with our body via these cells called neurons. And what they do is they release chemicals from one neuron to the other. So this neuron releases a, a neurotransmitter to this neuron, and then that neuron releases another one to another neuron, and then or to a body part. And that's how we communicate with each other. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. That's what dopamine is. It's a neurotransmitter get, that, that re gets released by specialized neurons in the body, in the brain, excuse me. So here is the, the dopamine pathway right here. So you have all these little red and yellow things. They're actually like, imagine them to be neurons. And so this red neuron sends a message to this area of the brain, or this neuron sends a message to this area of the brain. So the brain has four regions, if you always remember, and the main region of the brain is what we call the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the massive part of the brain that receives all kinds of sensory information. They receive all kinds of sensory information and make a decision about it. So you don't see with your eyes, you see with the back of your brain. You don't hear with your ear, you hear with the back of your brain. I mean the side of your brain. All right. You taste with your brain. All sensory information you feel, you touch with the top of your, of your cerebrum, specifically, not just your brain, but your cerebrum. So imagine all kinds of sensory information coming to your brain. You don't want to hear, smell, taste everything. Right? You want to smell, taste, um, hear things that matter. Uh, uh, that you can process and make good decisions. So there's a part of your brain right here called your frontal lobe uh, so you, or your prefrontal cortex. Um, that part of the brain is the, is the decision maker 
it detects it, it detects dictates your personality um and so this part of your brain is very important but then there's another part of the brain around here that's very important i'm not going to name all these names because i don't want to rattle you but just imagine this area right here is in connection with this area right here and basically that area, the middle area, is the part of the brain that decides what's important. So imagine you tearing everything. Like that's sensory overload. So there will be messages sent to this area, but then this area will say, uh, that's not an important sensory information. Skip it. Or... um your brain imagine like imagine all these neurons imagine millions of neurons in your brain and they're constantly sending signals to one another and sometimes so, some scientists say like practice signals like so, like imagine they're, like they're practicing like if she hears a loud boom she should duck so imagine in your brain your neurons are constantly sending messages without your knowledge Without your conscious knowledge, you see this frontal lobe right here? This is the conscious knowledge. This is, you, you, you're conscious here. Every, pretty much all the other parts of your cerebrum as well as other parts of your brain is subconscious. And so suppose your neurons are practicing saying, okay, if they hear a loud boom, they should duck. So they practice giving the brain a loud boom. But because your conscious doesn't hear the loud boom, you don't really duck, but at least your neurons are getting some kind of practice. This is the new phenomenon um, in terms of what many neuroscientists are saying. Well, what dopamine does is dopamine sends messages to these areas to tell the area, hey, whatever happens, that is important. And it also tells this area in the front, whatever just happened, that is very important. So most people, when they think dopamine, they think it's the reward center, you, may, you get pleasure, you get euphoria, but it's not really about pleasure. Yes, you do get pleasure from this. Why? Because it's trying to tell the brain that is important. Whatever you just did, do that again. But we're starting to see, like I talked to you last, like a couple of weeks ago about trauma and, and how um, sexual abuse raises dopamine. Well, sexual abuse is not pleasurable. It's not good. So why is dopamine up in that situation? It's up because... It's a learning neurotransmitter. So when the dopamine gets released into the brain, it's saying, whatever just happened, do not do that again. So it's a learning neurotransmitter. It's saying, whatever just happened, that was really good. Do that again. I'm going to give you pleasure from it. I'm going to give you your foyer from it. So I want you to do it again. I'm a, and I'm going to give you the ability uh, motor function, like another, a lot of part, another part of the brain responds to dopamine so that you can actually do something about what just happened. I hope I'm clear. Here, Sean, hey, Sean or Connie, I don't know who you are. You're one, as Sean says. <laughs> All right, so I hope you, I get you, I, I, I hope I taught you what dopamine does. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that tells the brain Whatever just happened is a, an important learning process, whether it be bad or whether it be good. All right. Well, what do stimulants do? Stimulants enhance dopamine. Stimulants activate dopamine. So imagine you release dopamine. It's like it's a learning thing. I really want you to focus on that thing. That thing is very important. Okay. Hey, Connie. <laughs> Kalia. Good. I'm glad you're starting her. So, so yeah, it's very important. This is a very important uh, lecture um, on what drugs do to your brain. So um, back to what I was saying, uh, 
so dopamine is a learning drug. So it makes you focus on a certain thing at hand. It makes you um, give importance to that thing. And um, basically, drugs or stimulants activate that in some kind of way. So if you remember, I told you dopamine is a neurotransmitter. So what do I mean by neurotransmitter? Um, if you remember, I said this neuron goes and talks to this neuron. How? Well, this neuron right here sends a message. This little, little, these little purple balls, those are the neurotransmitters. They release the neurotransmitter to talk to the other neuron. So what, what dopamine does is it's in here and it gets sent out to talk to another neuron to tell that neuron in the area of the brain to say, well, hey, what just happened is very important. And I'm going to either give you some kind of euphoria from it, some kind of pleasure from it, or some kind of learning experience from it. Well, stimulants can either make dopamine come out too much right? That's what methamphetamine does. So meth causes dopamine to come out too much. It, it does something to a transporter. And so now dopamine is out here all the time when it shouldn't be. Like you shouldn't, everything shouldn't matter. Everything shouldn't be hyper-focused on. But now meth has come out and now it's all, always out here. So you get this big high of euphoria because you're supposed to make, because whatever just happened is supposed to be very important. So they're gonna give you some kind of really nice euphoria. Or LSD. LSD behaves like dopamine. So besides you releasing this blue, these blue balls out, imagine taking a drug that has a whole bunch of dopamine out all the time when it shouldn't be. So LSD, you're like, you know, you're like in a in your in your own euphoric world. Remember, I told you about the part of the brain um, that's very important here that starts to relay importance to things. Like this is very important, and I talked to you about how you can have these practice neuron neurotransmissions in your mind. So, so in reality. Um, Everybody is hearing things or seeing things, but because this area doesn't um, cause it to be focused on and doesn't allow your conscious mind to focus on it, it's like it doesn't exist. But what happens when you take a drug and everything that's coming around you, even those practice hallucinations is what we call it, starts to happen, then you start to hallucinate. You start to think things are happening when they're not happening. Why? Because you took a drug that behaved like dopamine. That's LSD. So methamphetamine, ecstasy, you feel this euphoria. Why? Because you cause dopamine to come out too much. Your natural dopamine comes out too much. LSD, you're on a major high because you have too much dopamine because you're taking a drug that's behaving like dopamine. And then cocaine. Cocaine is a drug. See, you see these little purple things right here? They're actually sending the dopamine back. You see what's happening? They're sending the dopamine back. Well, what cocaine does is it stops the res this transporter from sending the dopamine back in. So it, once again, it stays too much here. And it keeps sending messages to neurons and making neurons feel like whatever just happened is very important and you should have some kind of euphoria and happy experience. That's the high you feel. The high you feel is because you're either stopping the dopamine from getting sent back in, cocaine, you either have too much dopamine because you're sending too much dopamine out, methamphetamine, also known as ecstasy, or you took a drug that's acting like dopamine and you have a whole bunch of dopamine in your system because you have a fake, 
dopamine in your body. And you're all you're in a euphoric world. That's what that's what a high is. But the problem is you're attaching importance to things that don't matter. And you're not just messing with dopamine. There's another neurotransmitter called noradrenaline, noradrenaline that you're messing with. Those same drugs work the same way with another neurotransmitter, noradrenaline. And that neurotransmitter is important for fight or flight, right? So if, you know, I'm from Apopka, if a bear chases me in Apopka, what should I do? I should run, right? You guys live in Bear Lake, right, Sean? It's Connie. If a bear's coming, you got to run. You got to run. So who tells you to run? Well, your neurons tell you to run. How? They, they send out noradrenaline or nor, norepinephrine. It comes out into your system, and you start to feel afraid, and you get out of there. Well, the same drugs that I just talked about will cause you to do the same thing, but there's no bear chasing you. So all of a sudden, you're paranoid. You think a bear... You think of you think a bear is chasing you when it's not. Why? Because you took a drug that was messing with your neurochemistry. Drugs are dangerous. These are what we call stimulants. They're dangerous. I think on the, on the last Sunday of the month I'm going to talk about the stimulants they give children for ADHD. They're pretty much doing the same thing on a lower level. I'm going to talk about that, but not today. All right. Um, lastly, marijuana. So what's marijuana? Marijuana doesn't behave like those kind of drugs. But indirectly, it does the same thing. It's an it's a indirect stimulant. Right? It's not making dopamine come out too much. It's not stopping dopamine from being taken up, and it's not acting like dopamine. That's why it's not as bad as those drugs. That's why marijuana is not as bad as those drugs. However, what marijuana does is it's dealing with pain management. So what it does is it inhibits the GABA. If you remember last time... um, I talked to you about GABA and how it's important for sleep. Uh, But GABA, a lot of the times, may cause pain in your brain. And so it inhibits that to stop the pain. But in in, in reaction to that, the dopamine jumps up because GABA also stops these dopamine cells. So it's like an indirect thing. It, It, it's, the GABA neurons usually stop dopamine, but then I take marijuana and I stop the GABA, and so the dopamine is released now in an indirect way. And so I get those that same high or a similar high, not as much, but I get a high from it because I'm stopping my pain and I'm releasing dopamine in an indirect way. All right, I hope I explained to you what dope does dope basically are stimulant drugs meth amphetamines ecstasy cocaine whether it be crack cocaine or powder cocaine is the same thing the only difference between crack cocaine and powder cocaine is that i snort powder cocaine so i have to wait a little longer when i inhale a, a crack cocaine i'm just i'm i'm smoking it So I'm putting it right into my lungs, right into my bloodstream, right to my brain, just faster. But it's just doing the same thing. But the faster it happens, the more toxic it can be. Yeah. All right. So what are the adverse adverse effects of stimulants? I I basically said it already. I'll say it again. Um, Here's that crack cocaine there. Um, you're smoking cocaine versus snorting it. So it, you're, 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 it's going to your brain really fast. Uh, so what's going to happen? Your pupils are going to dilate. So if you see a, a bunch of people with dilated pupils, you know, that's saying, hmm, they're on drugs. Why? Well, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, when a bear is chasing you, what do you have to get? You have to get a lot of light. You need to see very well. So your pupils dilate so you can get all the light so you can run out of there. 
So it's 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 like, you know, it's like you're running from a bear when there's no bear. So your heart starts beating fast. Your blood pressure is high. Your body temperature is high. Why? Because a make-believe bear is chasing you. You took a drug, a stimulant that has done this to you, either um, uh, by messing with norepinephrine or dopamine. Um, you lose your appetite. Ever people who all of a sudden have to eat a lot, they're coming down from a high. They were on some kind of drug like marijuana. You ever people have munchies with marijuana? Why? Because they they ate, they took marijuana, suppressed their appetite because they had to focus on whatever was important, right? Even though it was nothing's important, but you took a drug that makes whatever you just did important. So nothing matters. Food doesn't matter. Nothing matters. But then when the high comes down, you gain your appetite back, an aggressive amount of appetite back. That's what we call the munchies. Um, your disturbed sleep. Why? Because you're focused. You're alert. Whatever just happened, you have to be very alert. So you took a drug that made you very alert. So now you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Hallucinations, irritability, sometimes maybe even violent behavior. Why? Fight or flight. Fight or flight. You activated that. You activated that. And so now, you, I, I don't know if you um, heard about bath salts, the, the man in Miami. It acts just like cocaine. It's, a, it's a similar to cocaine. And what happened is, uh, instead of, fight, instead of fl running away from that guy, he bit his face off. He fought him. He took a drug. So you're in panic. You're in panic mode because drugs, these stimulants, activate your alertness and panic mode. Or even psychosis can, can happen. Once again, I told you, your brain is very um, alert. It learns with dopamine. You get in a euphoria from it because it's trying to tell your body whatever just happened is very important. But what happens when you start to activate your brain too much and everything starts to be important? Even make-believe things. That's what we call a hallucination and psychosis. You took a drug, and what's really bad is when they lace it, marijuana already indirectly activates dopamine, and then you take a, another drug with it that also activates dopamine, it skyrockets to the top. And so things that have no importance start being important, and you start to hear things, and you start to see things that don't even exist. This is the danger of drugs. Drugs are dangerous. They're hijacking what was supposed to be normal. We're supp no, dopamine is a good neurotransmitter. It helps you to focus on things that are important. But if you hijack your nervous system and make things that are, are not important important, you start to hallucinate. You start to go through psychosis. And all of these things can happen from any of the drugs I mentioned. Marijuana at a lesser rate, why? Because it's indirect. It's indirect. It leads to dopamine increase, but in an indirect way. But if you consistently take marijuana over and over and over again, or if it's somehow laced with chemicals, then it will behave just like cocaine and methamphetamine. It's going to lead to similar behaviors. All right. I hope that makes sense. Um, give me a thumbs up or a heart or something that I, I can tell that it is making sense to you guys. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I see that Lee has joined and John has joined. I don't see any questions on my computer. Let me check my phone just in case. Um, I don't see any questions so far. Okay, so I'm doing that oh. right now. Yep. Yeah.
Yep. Okay. Don't see any questions. Feel free to ask. Oh, oh there are. All right. Well, I just told you marijuana can be dangerous, right? How any chemical substance taken that, that modulates your brain chemistry is dangerous. Um, Dana asked, does Adderall fall into any of these categories? Um, I, I'm going to talk about that. I told you on the fourth week of this, it's, um, it's a stimulant. It's a low level of what I just taught you. So everything I just taught you, Adderall is a, a chemical that whose job is to behave like those things, but at a lower level, right? Because um, so, so ADHD, you get distracted. What, did, what are you trying to get the kids to do? You're trying to get them to focus. Focus on things that are important. But all those side effects... I'm not going to, I'm not going to, oh, I did say I wouldn't talk about specific types of drugs. You got me, Dana. You got me. <laughs> they're, the, they're, the, they're low levels of what I just taught you. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if years upon years of, of children taking these things, how it affects their brain chemistry and their desire to go to the higher levels of, of drugs. There's no, you know, Research is going to always say there's no um, empirical data to say that. But biochemically, ultimately doing the same thing at a lower level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Princess Rwanda, I'm glad you're watching. <laughs> um, medicinal effects of marijuana. So like, like I said before, um, any chemical substance is dangerous. And my goal is, is to abate. Like, we need to get our bodies healthy to the point where we won't need drugs, period. We don't need medication. But are there any medicinal effects of marijuana? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's how marijuana works, okay? If you remember, I told you, it doesn't do anything. It's not directly like those three, right? It's not like the other three, methamphetamine, cocaine, LSD, where they're, mod where they're directly modulating um, dopamine levels. Marijuana messes with GABA. It's a pain modulator. It's a, it, it binds its own receptor. Um, so there's two special chemicals in marijuana. It's called, they're called THC and CBD. THC is, is, is acting directly on the brain to mon monitor pain levels in the brain, which indirectly leads to dopamine going up, which gives you that euphoria. Okay? So THC messes with the brain. So I don't like THC. But there's another chemical in marijuana called CBD. It's called cannabidiol right? Marijuana is called cannabis. And so this, this guy doesn't mess with the brain or, you know, it's a little, you know, there's a little fight in the field about that, but it's not, it's major target is not the brain. That, that's what I'm, that's what I've seen. So the major target for another chemical in the plant, remember marijuana is a plant. It has tons of chemicals, um, the, 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 the THC is the one that I talked about where it leads to indirectly activating dopamine and causing all that, the high and all that good stuff or bad stuff. <laughs> but there are tons of other parts of that weed, or it's not really a weed, it's a plant. And that plant has CBD. And that CBD is meant to bind other areas of the body. It doesn't mess with the brain too tough. What it does is it's actually anti-inflammatory. So when we hurt ourselves, when we cut ourselves, we feel pain, right? 
because we've dam damaged the body part and all our white blood cells, our immune system rushes to the area and the inflammation that's caused between the inflammation that goes over there and we have special receptors all throughout our skin that feels pain. Special, so I cut my skin, I feel pain because there's a receptor in that area that will send a message to my brain that there's pain. So what CBD does is it stops the pain at the, at the damage level, at the injury, where the injury has occurred. And it, and it slows down the immune system to stop inflammation because a lot of the pain that you get, you get it from the inflammation itself. So CBD, the CBD part of marijuana is anti-inflammatory. It's just like probably like the uh, NSAID, right? Uh, NSAID, um, um, what's, N, what's the NSAID? Uh, I take it all the time when I, <laughs> after I play volleyball. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, yeah. Um, it's Pastor Dave's special friend. We call ibuprofen. Yeah, those are. It's an anti-inflammatory, right? It stops the inflammation that you feel that causes the pain. Well, well, that's what that's what the the, the molecule in marijuana does. So, um, people who have irritable bowel diseases, why? Because their their bacteria in their bowels are causing a lot of inflammation, and the inflammation is causing them great pain or arthritis, right? There's a lot of inflammation in their joints and it's the inflammation is causing them great pain. Well, that marijuana will, will quell that. It'll remove their pain, not in their brain. It's not messing with their brain. It's messing with their, it's calming their body down. So pain management, endometriosis, psychosis, fibromyalgia, all these things that pain drugs that we, we diagnose, um, with the pharmaceutical companies, marijuana is doing the same thing. It's a muscle relaxant. What I will say is you don't need to smoke marijuana to get that because smoking marijuana will get it to your lungs, send it straight to your, to your brain. And remember, all the things that pro ha are problematic for your brain will happen. But if you, if you have low levels of it, via ingestion, maybe eating or drinking, monitored by a physician in a legal state. <laughs> have, I, have I put all my checks and balances, <laughs> right? Legal state, monitored by a physician, and then ingesting it versus smoking it where you can get cancer, smoking. Smoking is bad. And you have high levels of it and it goes straight to your brain. That can cause all the psychosis and all that other stuff that's dangerous. But if you eat it at a low level in a legal state, um, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I feel about it, but I think you could tell. Yeah. It also fights opioid and alcohol addiction, right? I do I think it's worse? I mean, um, do I think I think alcohol and other types of drugs are worse than marijuana? Absolutely. Because what happens is when you drink it or eat it, it goes to your body. It leaves your stomach and goes to your bloodstream to your body and it doesn't rush to your brain as if you inhaled it. Or taken harmful substances by smoking chemicals and things like that into your lungs, in your throat. Um, and so instead of getting stuck on these opioids right, and alcohol, then, you know, some people use it so they can get off of the opioid pain. They fight their opioid addiction by, by, by medicinal marijuana. Yeah, Andel, Andel, I'm not talking to Andel because he keeps trolling me about the, about the calves. So I need another lawyer. Maybe Sean will represent me, um, <laughs> Connie. <laughs> yeah, so there's, uh, there's some powerful... So how do I feel about marijuana? Um, we sh I feel that we should not take any chemical substance um, to get high. I feel that we should live a healthy lifestyle so that we don't have inflammatory issues, so that we won't need medication. But if we have these inflammatory issues, 
and we live in a state where it's legal and we don't smoke it but we are prescribed it what's the difference between taking a prescription from anything else yeah 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 lastly I want to end with this it is so important that you pay attention to your child pay attention to your teen when I do these talks it's amazing when I do the talk I remember when I did the talk about um, preparing your kid for stem when I would do it when I was talking about the brain of a, of, of a K through five so that the elementary level or when I was talking about the womb to pre-k the very young child man I had parents galore watching me and asking me questions and caring. When I started to talk about um, the brain development of a high schooler, like an adolescent, I didn't have any parent. It's like parents care so much, like when they're two, four, five, six, nine, 10, 11. And then when they get to 16, 17, they just let them go to the wolves, man. But here's the issue. If you look at the way our brain grows, look at the way our brain goes, a newborn to a one month to a nine months. Within nine months, look how much neurons grow. Massive amounts. The first two years is a push of neuron growth. We call it neuroplasticity. Lots of growth of neurons. But then look at the, look at the difference between an adult neuron brain area and a two-year-old. There's less neurons in adults than in children. There are less neurons in adults than in children. Why? Because they go through this pruning stage. So there's a massive amount of growth in the first few years, even when it gets to adolescence. But in an adolescent brain, it's not fully developed yet. Their frontal lobe. Remember I told you about the frontal lobe? So the green means not developed. So see how it's green, very green? It's because it's not developed. And then there's less green, and there's less green, and there's less green as it develops. But what happens is there's actually less neurons but more focus. Like they're, the neurons are talking to themselves. They've decided who to talk to. But in an adolescent brain, the frontal lobe is still undeveloped. Look, there's a lot of green in the front. So they make all kind of risky decisions. They drive like speed demons. They get hooked on alcohol. They experiment with drugs. And at the same time that they're experimenting with these drugs, marijuana especially, when I was a kid, this is what bothers me about music. When I was a teenager, all of the heavy rap artists were promoting dope like crazy. There was, there was a song, if you remember Dana, where it ended with, <clears throat> and he coughing. Remember that, remember that rap song? And it was a bad rap song. I mean, everybody loved that song, but it promoted marijuana use to teenagers who don't have a proper decision-making part of their brain. On top of that, the brain is actually dying. It's pruning itself. So you gotta be careful because if it prunes itself too much, and we're learning that some drug use leads to, and alcohol use leads to too much pruning. So if you notice these kind of um, certain type of mental illness um, is activated, in the late adolescent stage when this pruning is happening. So either they're getting psychosis through, through too much drug use or laced drug use, or even it's damaging their brain cells too, too much, leading, their, leading the brain to die too much, which when the brain, when certain areas of the brain don't work, like that special area that I said, is important to say, hey, it monitors what's important, then, then you start getting mental illness from, from this chemical imbalance. You're taking drugs and it's causing chemical imbalance, either directly by the drug use itself 
or indirectly by damaging neurons. At the time when adolescence has a, a high amount of, of pruning. So who needs to be very careful about drug use? Our adolescents. We gotta watch our kids. We gotta be careful um, in terms, yeah, Dana, a lot of songs, a lot of rap artists, even now. But I know it started when we were kids. Cause back in the eighties, rap was like crack is whack. You know, don't believe the hype, public enemy, because crack was really, really bad. But somehow in the 90s, we went from saying crack is whack to. <sighs> and what happens is that marijuana, the agent called T-H-E, it attacks, the, it, it hurts the brain. So are there, med are there medicinal uses for marijuana? Certain parts of marijuana, not all. And it has to be the part that is attacking the body, inflammation, not the brain. Not the brain. Be careful. Get off of drugs. Watch your kids. Live a healthy lifestyle so that you won't need medicinal marijuana. All right? Any questions? Let me check out to see if there are any questions. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll wait a little bit. Uh, remember, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Please uh, like me on Phenomenal Stemist. Facebook. Uh, also subscribe to my page on YouTube. I need some subscribers. Go to my YouTube page, Dr. Maya P. Byfield, and subscribe. Um, I definitely are gonna. I'm gonna make um, edit and put these videos on Facebook. Thank you guys for your support. Let's see if you have any questions. Can't be simple as just they know. Watch your kids and tell them exactly what's doing to your, their brains. Have a good night.